So yeah, we're cruising down the, the Intervale Road. Um, it's a pretty unique road, pretty flat, long alleyway with lots of trees, native trees. So here's our uh, production field. We got about uh, 100,000 trees here, um, all started by cedar cutting. It's actually been a really good growing year. We've had really warm days, but then we'll get you know good soaking for about a day or half a day of rain. So we obviously could use more, but it's it's been an excellent year. So people think of Vermont as the Green Mountain State. You know all this vegetation. Why do we need more trees? Yeah, I could say the state is, is forested pretty well. Maybe 60 to 75 percent is, is covered in, in some type of forest. That being said, a lot of the really critical areas that we're working on aren't in good shape. They're heavily polluted in some ways. There's, there's no vegetative area buffer, so to speak. So, you know, we're looking up in the mountains and they look great, but let's look down in our tributaries and in our development areas where, you know, where they haven't really done much to these, these streams and brooks and rivers. These areas are just as important as, as our mountains. And so, you know, this is all great that Vermont's covered in, and heavily forested, but they're also really critical areas in the state, especially along ag and development areas that are in very, very poor shape. And that really need our help in establishing these buffers that in the longer term, 20, 50 years, that ideally will turn around and start creating life again. Okay, as we enter here, we're, we're about to head to our riparian uh, restoration site that we uh, were out about a month ago planting native trees with Patagonia. Looking at this site, it's very successful. Um, not only with the hard work that our Patagonia group uh, did a month ago, um, you know, looking at, you know, trees growing and surviving, but just overall. And so you look back here, this is uh, years, years old, and this is kind of our ideal setting, what this will eventually will turn out to be, a, a functioning riparian buffer. All in all, this site is in really great shape. Um, you know, looking at it a month later. You know, two, three hundred years ago, most of the landscape was clear cut for sheep farming. We have found over uh, the few hundred years that over the degrading of our, our lands and kind of uh, large scale commercial agriculture, uh, you know, we're finding that uh, pollution is increasing quite a bit from these old practices. And so, you know, the, the old way isn't necessarily the, the correct way. So we are trying to uh, counteract that as a restoration conservation nursery by reestablishing these riparian vegetative zones where in time these will become our natural filters. Our job, it's a type of situation that it's going to take time. There's not immediate gratification. From seed, to germ, to planting in our field, to then planting in, out in the Vermont landscape. We're talking three to five to 10 years of care and, and hard work to really make these you know, beneficial and successful. So receiving the Patagonia grant was, was amazing. We rely as, as a nonprofit uh, a certain amount of donations and grants in order to operate. And by receiving that grant, it basically gives us the opportunity and the ability to continue moving forward as a conservation nursery. 
So by receiving these grants, it's really kept us at this tier that we've been trying to, to reach for many years now since I've been here, that a feeling of comfortability, of ease, of we'll still have a job in some ways, you know, we'll still be able to grow a great product um, and, and function as a, a really healthy uh, conservation nursery. So I, I think people are realizing um, the impact of tree planting now that you know, things are being more affected in a negative way and you know, someone might want to go to some Burlington beaches and they can't because of sewage overflow or dumping, high levels of milfoil or algae blooms. They're getting affected personally. That's where the Intervale Center is pretty valuable in the fact that it's a resource so, so folks can look and be like, how can I get involved? Oh, I can plant trees that then will filter some of this excess runoff that then you know, will control a lot of this extra nutrients that are running into the lake and affecting my recreational use. I think people are slowly realizing it. There's still a lot to be learned. And I think as a, a community, especially being so close related to Lake Champlain, um, that folks are learning more and want to be more involved.